Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Today's video we're going to be finally ripping this thing out and painting the sides of it, some external paint colouring. So I'll be showing you how I go about painting this and I'm also going to be running you through a new tool that I bought, be it a vinyl cutter, which is how I'm going to do all the markings on it. Uh, so a couple of videos ago I put three options out because I couldn't choose myself. Those options were this one here, option one, which was the 100 year anniversary Red Devils jet. Option two was the A10C 2021 demo jet, the Red River Hog. And option three was a grey A10C um, of the Flying Tigers. A few combat markings on it though, so it looks pretty cool. So I tallied up all the results of the YouTube poll, all the comments in YouTube and all the comments in Instagram. And the winner with 174 volt votes was this bad boy here, the option number one. So what I'm going to do now is disassemble the thing, get it out in the garage, and we'll start doing it. All right, so back in the garage, first thing I've got to do is just touch up some imperfections with some normal car blade putty. Uh, you can see that there's some sort of crack going on here, which I can fill, and I also might just try and fix this gap here a little bit better, so I'll build that up. Uh, that's all I need to do, so I'll get that on, sand it back, and then we'll get into the actual painting. It's never going to be perfect because it is just layers of MDF. Uh, you can also see that it's not exactly a curved surface because of the geometry of it. Um, so I'm never going to get it perfectly smooth. I considered putting another complete new external skin, so one piece of MDF to make it all perfectly flush. But I decided against it because I didn't want to have to stuff around up the top here, um, getting it nice and straight and refilling it and repainting it all over again. So we're just waiting for that to dry and then I'll repaint it. In the meantime, I thought I'd show you this thing right here. So this is my new vinyl cutter. I say new, I've had it for a long time and I've been working through how to use it. In Warthog Project fashion, it is the cheapest one I could find on eBay. Uh, ignore this little label here. I did that myself on it. This is a vinyl cutter. It's very, very similar to use to both a 3D printer and a laser engraver. All it is is the axis. You can see that carriage there. Carries a, um, a very small little blade in there uh, and it basically moves the vinyl in and out and cuts where you need to. The decal there I've put just to remind myself not to put the clamps because I found that if I accidentally put the clamps there without thinking, the vinyl will slip on that bit of metal roller. You can see that the rollers in here have grip on them. Uh, you put your vinyl in there, lower it and it clamps it on, but when it's on the smooth surface, it doesn't do a very good job of clamping. Uh, I also added this tape on here because it's got it's got lots of grooves in there and I found that the vinyl would sometimes get caught in that groove and end up in either jams or creases. Uh, I'll leave a link to this machine. From memory, it cost me about $380 uh, shipped to Australia. The software I use is the software that came with it for free, so it does the job. All I really need to do anyway is import the SVG files that I make in Coral Draw and it cuts it for me perfectly. It's got a 600 mil wide x-axis, so you can put 600 mil wide rolls of vinyl in it and it can be as long as you want it to be basically as long as your roll can be if you want it if you want a decal to be 600 mil wide and nine meters long you chuck a nine meter roll of vinyl on it for example i did that wall decal there on this machine and i think it came out pretty good uh, so what i'm going to use this for is to cut all the decals on the externals but i'm going to use them as masks so i think the actual markings i'll just do in black vinyl and they can be on but the panel lines and that sort of stuff i'm going to do masks so basically i'm going to print them out stick them on and then paint over the top of them that's the plan okay so here's the machine i've loaded it up ready to print the mask you can see that i'm just using a short off cut of vinyl and you can see at the back of the machine it's got on the stand just some rollers on some bearings where you can put the vinyl uh, basically it'll just drag it through and move the blade around and cut it uh, the settings up here I haven't touched at all. I played around with it a little bit to see the difference, but this one what I've got just cut perfectly each time, so I haven't had to mess around with anything. Out of the laser engraver, the 3D printer and this, this is the easiest thing to use in the world. Probably because I've spent so much time stuffing around and upgrading the laser that, mate, this just works straight out of the box and it does the job perfectly. So um, all I've got to do is hit start on the computer and it will run. Thank you. 
the end result is a large black sticker sheet that has all my masks pre-cut. So all I need to do now is peel them off and stick them on. And I've just mocked up the panel lines. I think this is the layout that I'm gonna go with. I sort of based it on photos of the real jet, just that section of it. All this is gonna be painted and then all the decals, like the things that would be painted on the outside of it are going to be cut with vinyl and stuck on like stickers. But this is just, I'm gonna use these vinyl masks to paint the lines in it. So I'm gonna basically just spray paint it black, put these masks down and then hit it with the final base coat color. Uh, you can see that I've done all the rivet detail too. I did that with these upholstery nails, um, just lined them out and banged them in with a hammer. Um, so I've got some rivet detail down the bottom here, up the side there where that panel will join uh, and across the top. So I'm gonna do the canopy mask, the, the gap where the canopy would be in black and then all the other panel lines are gonna be in a dark sort of slate gray and I'm just gonna do that with spray paint. So what I'll do now is pull all this masking off. Actually, I'll just pull off this canopy mask and I'll hit that with some black spray paint, just that, that section. Uh, let that dry, put the mask back on. Then I'll pull all these masks off, hit that with slate gray, put them back on and then hit it with its base coat. And then hopefully when I peel all the panel line markers off, it should um, be underneath there. Okay, so day two out in the garage. Uh, I've just did the black last night and I've let it dry for 24 hours. I've only done the top of the canopy frame because that's where the mask is going to be. I've also done black down here because that's where the door for the boarding ladder is, just on that side, not on that side. Uh, so what I'm going to do now is just put the mask back on to cover where I want the black to be. All right, so I've done all the panel line marking. You can see I put slate gray where the other panel line masks are gonna be. Just waiting for that to dry. So you would have remembered looking at the options, I had those tail number wall art things in the middle of them. So this is what they look like. I did this because it was a test run to see what the paint looked like and also how the vinyl would stick to it. The vinyl tail numbers came out awesome, as did the detail on the Air Combat Command badge. Um, that came out awesome. The blue's paint, so is the white lightning bolt. I used a mask. Again, that was me trolling if the masks would work, and they did. The top bit there is just black, and it's red vinyl. You can see that the red vinyl came out terrible because it is the cheapest red vinyl I could find. I'll get some quality matte vinyl. The yellow came out awesome. Again, that's the cheapest yellow vinyl I could find, and it came out awesome on the green. I've got a cool idea for the wall art for these, so I'm gonna redo them, but with some rivet detail, using the upholstery nails. And I'm going to add a light on the bottom, like the um, the formation light shining up like a V onto it. Will look pretty cool. I'll just get a car number plate light down there, battery powered. Should look pretty cool hanging on the wall. I've decided to go green only because it's been grey for about ten years now. Different shades of grey, so I'm going to mix it up a bit. Um, the other reason is I bought a whole bunch of green paint, and I've got no use for it unless I do this. I can always change it. Um, give it a couple of years, if I get bored of it, I'll swap it over. I think it might look good breaking it up. I've been painting grey for the last 12 years, so let's try something different. And also, I really wanted to put that on. Alright, so now it's time for paint. Let's do this. Alright, here we go. Alright, so day three out in the garage, you can see that I have done the green. Um, the patchiness on it is intentional. Uh, so I did a base coat of green and it just looked too flat. Uh, all the panel lines I went over with a slightly darker shade of green and then I hit all the rivets with the airbrush with a, a another slightly darker shade of green. So once the panel line maskings come off and you see the black lines under it, it should look all right. So the main guts of it where there's no detail is not exactly perfect, but I'm hoping the decals will take the eye off that. It's just the nature of having different layers of MDF glued together. What I'll do now is just peel off the maskings and then we'll get onto printing decals. That one's done. I've hit the rivets there with darker, but I haven't hit the rivets on this one yet. So you can sort of see the difference. Um, it looks pretty good, I think. Different than gray, I like it.
All right, so the main painting is basically done. The green's done, the panel lines are marked. Uh, look, if I had my time again, I wouldn't have chosen to do the panel lines in different colours. I should have just done it all in the slate grey. I think the sort of really black section of the canopy might take away from it a little bit. Uh, what I'm going to do anyway is weather that up, so I'm going to put um, sort of silver chipping along the edge there, and I also need to touch up some bits, like where the mask peeled off the paint but I'll do that later on. All I need to do now is coat it in flat clear, which I'm not gonna do because the flat clear I bought, uh, I just tried on a little bit of scrap and it bubbled it up. So luckily I didn't just hit it because I would've had to redo the entire thing. Uh, so that can wait. So what I'm gonna do now is hit it with the decals. So we'll jump over on the computer and I'll show you the decals and how I cut them. All right, so here we are in Coral Draw. This is the design that I've done for the external paint job. Now what I'm gonna do is the decals. So all I've done is created two new files. I've cut and pasted all the black ones into black decal cut, and then I've made them outlines only. And the same thing for the yellow ones. You can see how I've actually cut the edges of the bombs off to make it look like the sort of jet continues going. So all I do now is save this as an SVG so that the vinyl cutting software can read it. And that's called, that's this software here, it's called Sign Master Cut 3.5 and it came on a disc that came with the laser cutter. I've watched some YouTube videos and this is not very capable software if you're actually gonna design in it, but I'm not designing in it. Do all my designs in Coral Draw, and all I'm gonna do is import them into this as an SVG. So you import, uh, where is it, black, black decal cut, SVG, place it anywhere. Uh, so I've, I've set this up so it's 600 mil wide, so it's the width that the cutter can do. So all I'm gonna do now is export that to the machine. You just gotta click on this button up here. Uh, area test it just to make sure it fits on the bed. That will send the area test to the machine. All that does is just run the outside without cutting anything, just to make sure it'll fit on your material. So when you're done, all you need to do is click cut now and it will cut it. Okay, and what you end up with is this. It's a very large sheet of decals. You can just make them out there. Um, what I'm gonna do now is just run a very sharp blade and cut them out so the individual decals. So you can run weed boxes in the software, but I don't find there's much point because it won't go through the backing paper as well. So you end up having to recut them to get them as individual stickers anyway. So what I'll do now is I'll just cut them out with a blade. All right, so with the masking, all I did was peel it straight off and stick it straight on by Mark 1 eyeball. But um, with these ones, what I'm gonna do is, is use some transfer material. So what you get is this stuff here. It's the same sort of vinyl, however it's clear, and it's really low tack. So I'll do a process now, what's called weeding. So you basically peel off all the stuff that you don't want on your sticker, and then you cut a piece of that, stick it on the top, and then you'll have yourself a decal where all the letters will be perfectly spaced. So I'll do that now. Okay, so there's the decal that I'm gonna use, 10994. Um, now I just get, get a bit of this transfer paper. I cut it to roughly the same size, doesn't need to be perfect. If I was like selling these stickers or something, I'd make it perfect, but I'm just gonna wing it. And then all I do then is peel off the transfer paper here and stick it on like that. Rub it down so it's nice and stuck on. And then all I need to do then is when you peel this transfer paper off, the decal will go with it and stick that on it. Now I've got to do that to all of these other decals.
And here is the finished product. Um, I'm pretty stoked with how it came out. You can see how good the green and the yellow contrast each other, and that's what I was really aiming for. I think it's going to look really good when it's in the room um, to break up all the grey that's in there already, and it's not as boring. If you compare how the plan in Coral Draw looked compared to what I've ended up with, I'm pretty happy with how close they look. Anyway, that brings us to the end of this video. If you have any questions, please hit me up in the comments below or check out the website, uh, warthogproject.com. Make sure you like and subscribe if you um, like what you see and there's more coming. Uh, thanks heaps and I'll see you in the next one.